Good morning, Fort Worth, and welcome to the first annual State of the Recycling in Fort Worth. I uh, greatly appreciate you joining us either Facebook Live or at the Central Library in the Discovery Theater. This morning we have a great panel put together to talk about Fort Worth Recycling. I'd like to introduce Ann Zeta, Councilwoman Zeta. Good morning. I'm really happy to be here and excited to introduce our panel today. The first person on our panel is Robert Smouse, who you just heard from. He is one of the City of Fort Worth's Code Compliance Assistant Directors with more than 26 years of experience in waste, recycling, and sustainability industry. Since joining the city in 2015, he's helped implement the city's next 20-year comprehensive solid waste management plan, increase the residential recycling tonnage and reducing the contamination rate, and began working with Fort Worth businesses through the material management program team. Houston Chambliss is also with us this morning, currently holds a position of Senior District Manager for Waste Management at Fort Worth Hauling. He has over 30 years of experience in waste industry, with 19 of those being at waste management in various operational roles. He's been here in Fort Worth since the inception of our current contract, and Houston Chambliss received his undergraduate degree from the University of Arkansas. Mike Hugh is the General Manager for Republic Services of Fort Worth, one of the largest waste and recycling providers in the DFW area. He oversees the company's Fort Worth and Alito hauling companies, as well as operation of the North Texas Recycling Complex. The North Texas Recycling Complex processes all of the city of Fort Worth's recycling materials, residential recycling materials, and Mike has been with that company since 2018 and has prior experience in oil and gas and aviation. Joey Burnett is the Safety and Environmental Manager for West Rock South Fort Worth Container Plant, which is celebrating its 50th year in operation later tonight in the stockyards. West Rock is an international corporation focused on game-changing developments in paper making, innovation, innovative packaging design, and retail cardboard solutions to help drive business partners' growth that reaches outside the box. So I'm happy to be here to kick that off for you all this morning and happy to be talking about recycling here in Fort Worth. Well, thank you very much, Ann. Uh, you know, Fort Worth has uh, been facing a lot of questions, uh, you know, in the past couple years since different policy shifts uh, have happened internationally. Um, it, you know, within uh, the growth of Fort Worth, we have a lot of individuals moving into the area from different parts of the United States as well as the world. Um, and with the media coverage on the recycling industry, uh, we, we tend to face a lot of questions, and the questions about the state of recycling. Is recycling dead? And I'm here to tell you it's not dead. Recycling in Fort Worth continues to grow. It continues to improve. Uh, we do face challenges. Uh, everybody, I think, needs to remember that today we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of Texas Recycles Day, or the 23rd anniversary of America Recycles Day. Yes, that's correct. I'm a proud Texan, uh, and I'm proud to say that the Texas Recycles Day started 25 years ago uh, and was such a success, it grew through the National Recycling Organization and Keep America Beautiful uh, to become America Recycles Day. And so with that, everybody really, really needs to remember that the, the or origin or the roots of recycling uh, we did not start recycling because of financial means. We, we really started the recycling and reusing materials because of a resource uh, aspect, being able to reuse that resource instead of continuing to create resources that then d get disposed of. And that goes back to, you know, really World War I with metal. Uh, so it was never a financial aspect. But over the course of the years, the financial markets have kind of skewed or allowed the recycling industry to become focused on and somewhat dependent upon that recycling revenue. Uh, so as the recycling markets have changed due to policies international, uh, the supply has uh, outgrown demand in certain aspects. The markets for those materials have uh, dried up in certain areas. And so when individuals that you may talk to in different parts of the United States talk about, you know, hey, well, I hear recycling's dead. I hear we're landfilling material. I hear it's not worth it. That may be the case in certain parts of the United States, but it's not the case in North Texas. We have been uh, luckily blessed and fortunate enough to have a healthy industry and, and infrastructure for being able to reuse those materials and making new products. So 
the market has changed, the industry has changed, recycling has changed, and, and I think you'll hear some of that today. Uh, we have to get back to the basics. What is really the importance of recycling? What materials can be uh, effectively and efficiently captured at the curb uh, to be recycled? And what materials uh, have to be recycled through other channels and not just wish cycled uh, by placing them in the carts hoping that it does get recycled or it may not get recycled. Um, so really the, one of the big aspects is the markets have changed, uh, the industry has changed, uh, technology has changed, and, and packaging or what materials are actually uh, used uh, has changed. And I think all four of those aspects have changed rather quickly uh, over the past five, ten years that we can't lose sight of looking at a cost uh, of recycling today uh, that if we were to go back into the 2009-2010 time frame or 2004 or 1998 and when the industry uh, had a speed bump that they hit uh, we stopped recycling. We didn't. We continued to carry the course. We continued to focus on the benefits and the aspects that we can improve. Uh, and from the city standpoint, uh, we've enjoyed a you know, healthy and successful recycling program. So as a community, we just have to continue to focus on those aspects that we can uh, address individually, as residents, as homeowners associations, as a community, to make sure that recycling is uh, healthy today as it will be in 10 years from now. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Houston Shambliss to talk about collections. Well, I'm gonna, yeah, thank you, Robert, for uh, bring, uh, asking me to participate in this panel. I think it's uh, a discussion that, you know, as I've been here during the inception of the current contract we're working on, it, you know, it, I've seen it grow or it's changed in many ways. Um, but, it, you know, one of the things that we are battling is definitely getting the contamination out of the out of the out of the out of the cart that we are oblig or we're we're tasked with picking up. So what I want to kind of do is kind of go back in memory is that prior to the start of this contract, the current contract we're in, uh, you know, if you some of y'all might remember the old the old fashioned way, the old garbage way, uh, and and the, at that point in time, uh, recycling was picked up at the curb with a 14 what we call the 14 gallon cart you remember that guys right so so we had the 14 gallon cart and the driver in that the truck that was being used was a compartmentalized truck it had two sections not more not five or six of every item that uh, that is recyclable but it had two compartments so it had a compartment that paper and pla uh, paper and uh, cardboard went into everything else went into the other compartment the, uh, so, and the driver came and whenever he saw that 14 gallon bin, and usually a lot of times there were multiple bins or they had stuff around the, the, the bin, you remember that, so right there, uh, the driver would pull up, he'd stop, and guess what that driver is? He becomes a what? He's a, so a sorter and an auditor, yeah. that's right. So therefore, he's already doing a semi-sort, helping the processing, the MRF, before we go to the landfill and dump. So he throws all the cardboard, paper on one side, and everything else goes the other. Remember that, right? Yeah. So anyway, that, and then the problem, there's a lot of issues with that. I mean, I mean, there's efficiency issues. You, God darn, I got one side of my truck is full, and the other side, I still got room, but guess what? You got to go dump, yeah. because you can't, you, 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 so you're, so there's a lot of pros and cons to that method. So there, you know, there definitely is, we, so we moved to um, automation. You know, so, so we now use automation to pick up uh, the recycling here. Yeah. They're, uh, uh, they're called, uh, we use, uh, we run well over 30 trucks a day to pick up every single day of uh, collection service day. We run over 30 trucks and uh, those trucks are tasked with picking up all the recycling carts. And that's how those trucks are identified, uh, are, that identity, we, they know which cart or which cart to pick up by the identity of the cart, which is the blue cart here in Fort Worth. So, with that comes the possibility of contamination getting into that waste stream, and that's what the big battle is. Yeah. Um, and you know the drivers, you know the drivers uh, can sit here and tell you out there when they're on the streets they can see a lot of things. The unfortunate part versus the old method we used to do 
is they had uh, the lids closed and they don't see what's inside that cart when they dump. Uh, they, you know, unless that is visible, the cart, the lids open, the stuff sticking out of it. Uh, you know, we've we've seen the driver have seen everything from you know clothes to yard waste to automotive uh, parts and and stuff. Uh, you know, you know, one even was telling me the other day that he found a bowling ball in, in one of the in, his, in, in the load and stuff. But anyway, uh, yeah, we, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently, he, he wasn't a very good bowler, so he gave up the the sport. So, uh, and then the other thing they see is uh, just the plain plastic bags, the black plastic bags, which would be a, we don't know what's really in there, but that would kind of give us an indication that's household trash. It's probably gotten over into the into the blue cart for some reason or not so definitely once single stream recycling used by the automated silos definitely increases uh, the participation the the amount averages show that it increases it by 40 percent is what I'm told I would almost have to believe when Fort Worth went to single stream and the automated slide load, slide load I think we beat that, beat that. I beat that considerably. Yeah. So anyway, uh, with that, they come with the benefits of efficiency. You know, my driver, the driver is not in and out of the truck, you know, the safety, safety. Uh, from a safety perspective, mm -hmm. everything like that. So, you know, th their efficiency, most definitely too, uh, also, but one of the problems, you know, the cut, and then there's a convenience to it also f for the residents. Now they have a cart they can roll out. It's pretty, it's pretty, you know, it's a lot easier on them. Uh, usually with single stream, more, uh, more material, more items become uh, uh, acceptable in the recycling program. Yep. Um, and uh, it, it helps the cities and the municipalities that we work with achieve their goals, you know, when, we, when that single stream is introduced. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that, that, uh, that we can do, or we do do, out there on the streets to try to educate or notify, which is, you know, our drivers are running, and when we are able to see the contamination in the carts, we, we, we have a tagging system we use that we take a picture, make, you know, identify the address, and we send that information to the, uh, to the call center at the city to uh, uh, deal with the, uh, or address the issue and stuff. Or, and, 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 and the problem is, is that you'd only imagine it's not enough, in my opinion. It's just yeah. not enough. And, and, and there's efforts on the city's part as far as education, <clears throat> training, and, you know, it, it, when a new resident comes, the delivery of the cart, the, the, the training material information. or information material, yeah. th that is all well and good. And the and I know when we implemented this and delivered all the carts to that those residents, you know it's it's a it's, it was a, at that time I think there was 145 150 thousand units at that time. You know we're now up to 230. 230. Wow. 230. Yep. So you figure we got like I said we got over 30 thousand or 30 trucks every day running out there just to pick up wow. recycling cars. Not that doesn't include the trash. That's the recycling yeah. cars. Wow. So. There's a lot. There's a lot of material out there, and and there's a lot of folks, a lot of residents that are really doing a great job, uh, but we are seeing way too much contamination, and it's obvious to our driver. If he doesn't see it at the point of collection, he's definitely seen it when he goes to Michael's home. I'll call it Michael's home, but if, uh, you know, to dump, and, and and we that's when we see that 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 the, all the material, and you can you know it's. You definitely can see those black plastic bags. You can see those, uh, you know, the the uh, you know definitely the uh, you know, but, uh, even the white kitchen bags. Yes, People right. are using it's, it's, the white it's, kitchen right. bags it's, for recycling, but again, that recycling material shouldn't be bagged yeah. in the first place. No, that's right. Correct. And, it, it, and, it, and it's and it's it's diff Well, I wouldn't say it's difficult. It's just that we we need for that to get better. I mean, just so that 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 waste stream is cleaner material coming into there. Yeah. And, and as a collection company and as a driver, we want to, I mean, we want to be able to help some. And, and there's some great technology that's coming down the road. It's, you know, it's, it's that we, more can be done on this. You know, there's, there's, we're testing some technology right now in our commercial vehicles that actually has 
uh, cameras, third eye, that actually looking at the, at the, at the cart, looking down into, uh, into the hopper, where after you dump it, you can see the material. Now that's not gonna, once it's in the hopper, there's not, we're not gonna go digging it out, but what it is is at least identifying the address, uh, uh. Ad identifying the address, the location, the type of material, and that we can, you know, we, we have a hard decision to make. Do we, how do, do we go educate? Do we, do we enforce? Do we yeah. find? We don't want to get to that. I mean, I, I, th I don't think we do. Uh, however, we want the material just cleaned up. We right. want the right things being put into that cart yep. uh, and stuff. Um, but overall, um, the, collection, the collection is something that is, we have seen grown really have and, and and the support of your blue crews out there we have seen some things getting clean uh, get cleaned up a lot better um and you know we're and we it's noticeable in the audits audits we do every quarter yeah. you know so and you're seeing less res we're seeing less residue but there's still tons and tons of opportunity out there and i just gotta say houston before we go over to the the murph you know the one of the things when there is a identification of contamination, we do have what we call the city's blue crew, where we have individuals out auditing the recycling routes. They lift the lids, they go through looking for, you know, the, looking through the material to see what is in there, what is recyclable, what isn't recyclable. We start out with, you know, kind of what we call an oops tag. Uh, again, starting with the education. If you didn't know, Plastic bags are not you know, acceptable, or styrofoam uh, materials are not acceptable. We start with education, but as we identify it's a repeat occurrence, we move to what's called a bag tag, where the individuals will remove the recycling material from the cart that's not recyclable or acceptable, and they'll put one of these bag tags on it, and it actually goes to the individual's uh, utility bill, and there's a $10 fee assessed to it. So uh, we are able to identify at the source specifically. So education works broad-based, it works in a neighborhood, it works in general, and then at some point we have to move towards you know, the individual that is really not abiding by the guidelines and holding them accountable. Well, I, I guess I would add, uh, is that fair to say, yes, the blue crew, but the pro the, and they're doing a great job. The third eye technology and where that takes us is that we will, it'll be more, right now, quantity, uh, doing those audits with your blue crew is limited on the resources uh, that you have. With third eye, with the cameras, looking into the hopper, knowing that, that more touches can be made where we can blast the, the education or the, or, or the process of how do we fix that or get them doing the right thing. And I honestly believe everybody wants to do the right thing. I don't, think, I don't think they intentionally are doing that and stuff. The, the challenge is going to be with all this data, I mean, you got these videos, guess what? Somebody has to review those. And that's, so there's some other challenges that we got to work out and stuff. But I can see us, Robert, getting down the road where it will be, you know, it, it will be cleaned up. I mean, we're seeing, we're seeing improvements. And, and a lot of times, these commercial customers we go back to, they just, they, they, they weren't, wanted, I wouldn't say it take a little enforcement, but they'll say they didn't know. But in some cases, they do know. But it was because they didn't think we cared. So why do I care what if I put in recycling in there? So therefore, we, if we get it in front, of, this is important people. And the yeah. more we talk to them, and hey, Here's what can happen if you don't get this cleaned up, because there's cost associated with, yes. with doing that for, for the city, the company that you contract with, and so on. Absolutely. So, Michael, as, yeah. as far as so, getting all this material? Sure. So everything that Houston bring, he collects, he brings to our recycling facility, and we sort it. And I think that's a good, back, good to provide a backdrop to actually what happens to the materials when it's, when it's collected. How does it get processed? Because I think... Growing up, I was a wishful recycler as well. Uh, you know, you see something that has some metal and some plastic, and you say, well, the people at the recycling center, they probably melt it down or do something with it, and it gets recycled. And I think understanding what happens to the in the recycle stream of how it gets all the way to the mills helps will help people understand how they can help uh, prevent a lot of the contamination. So what happens when Houston's trucks bring the materials in they dump it and then we put it into a hopper, which then gets sorted through manually through hands. So we actually still to this day have people picking recyclable materials out as well as optical sorters. Uh, so what happens is that there is nothing that separates something that's both plastic and metal 
or any of the paper packaging that has uh, plastic on the inside of it. Nobody actually sorts that. Uh, so when you think about what you put into your bin, if it's a combination of materials, it's very difficult to recycle. So uh, as always, when in doubt, throw it out. Uh, because what ends up happening to that type of material is that that just ends up going through our sort line and then goes back to the, to the, um, to the landfill, landfill, right? And so then now when you think about helping out the environment, now you've actually double handled the material and transported Good it point. twice, right? And then it goes into a landfill. So, and, and within Fort Worth, mm -hmm. the, the way our system is, work, you know, operated and structured, uh, if residents are putting that material trash or non-recyclable material in the recycling cart, Houston's teams collects it, you sort it out, and it gets pulled out as non-recyclable item, it's actually five times more expensive than if the resident would have just put that non-recyclable item in the trash cart in the first place. Right, right. That's a very good point. And in the state of the recycling that we're at, you know, that just adds expense to everything and that makes it, it puts more pressure on the entire system. So in order to have recycling be sustainable in the long term, those are the things that as individuals we can do to tighten up uh, and help out the market in general because it is tight. Uh, the good news is, is that we don't have any issues finding, uh, finding people to buy our material to be recycled here in Fort Worth, which is great. Uh, in fact, you know, for us here at the North Texas Recycling Center, we're actually making capital investments in our, uh, in our recycling center. So we're spending over a million and a half dollars to increase the capacity uh, to be able to handle more recyclables, right? So when we talk about the health of recycling, uh, you know, for us as a company, Republic Services, we believe long term, it's still there, and specifically in Fort Worth, uh, there for recycling is alive and well for us. Uh, and that doesn't mean that there aren't challenges over the because of contamination. Uh, typically, at our recycling complex, you know, 30% of the material that comes in is contaminated, right? So we so we only get to sort and sell 70% of that. So the other 30% has to go to the landfill, okay. right? And so you think that's a very big number uh, for things that we're intentionally sorting and putting in the recycling uh, in our recycle bins. Uh, and I think for us, the, the most important part there is that adds cost to it. So the cost, because of contamination, has gone up 50% to sort this. Uh, because of the contamination, we have to have manual hands in there. Yep. And we're making some investments in robotics uh, for the long term to help sort that out. Uh, but overall, the, the biggest thing that people can do uh, to help the recycling market and Fort Worth in recycling is know what to throw. And we'll talk a little bit about that later, mm -hmm, yeah. right? Empty, clean, and dry. So when you have your materials, is cleaning it out, right? And uh, making sure that it's dry and then don't put it in bags, yep. right? And so for us, the big thing is, is that you can collect your material, but if you bag it and then put it in the recycle bin, uh, that can contaminate it as well. And it makes it much more challenging for us. Uh, and at the end of the day, when in doubt, throw it out. Right? Absolutely. So. And, and you talk about that contamination, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, 30%, you know, if you, you think about that at 30% contamination, you have 10 trucks roll into your facility and dump basically that's like saying seven of them are pure recycling and three of them are nothing but trash i mean that is that's a huge impact to have to go through and sort that material out when it never should have been in the recycling cart in the first place great michael joey well you know the the that 30 percent you know not all of it you know it gets gets pulled out of that so the mills are still going to get some of that. So that cost is still, you know, it's still handed down because there's still more work to do once it gets to the mill. You know, I, there's a lot of, I've got a, I've got a few notes here because it is, it is such an important topic. Uh, even just from a, the residential side, you know, uh, it's a daily, it's a daily thing. You got to, you got to stay on top of it, you know, yourself, even in your own house, right? And, and, uh, and, that the importance of that is I think once people realize the education like we were talking about the contamination what it can do and what it can cause so from the paper industry talk about cardboard uh, my plant specifically deals with uh, uh, corrugated boxes but but the fibers are the same as far as that goes um, uh, we have a we have contaminated uh, paper let's see the recycling let, let me back up a minute the container division uses, you know, uh, the fibers from these materials to make the boxes, right? So these fibers is what's going to get in to the product, right? And that goes to the consumer, which is us, right? So contamination causes several items. So uh, they can cause the contamination that gets by, 
or a poor, causes poor fibers, right? So it can have a, a defective final product. It uh, has, has multiple negative impacts. Defective final product, uh, customer rejections and complaints. I mean, just think about it, how important the quality of, of your product is now these days compared to what it was years ago. It's not the same. It's not even close. Yeah. So uh, odor. I mean, contamination causes odor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, who wants their... Who wants their food, you know, uh, in a in a product in a box that smells, smells right? You, get a, no, you don't. You, you don't get want that. that. We don't want that. <laughs> um, and one of the, the the big issues here is the bacterial growth that's in the the paper itself. Uh. So so when that happens, when it gets to the mill and, and it, that you do get that contamination, they've got to treat it with chemicals, right? So they've got to they've got to treat it. So now you've got lost time and productivity, right? Uh, in, increase in chemical costs. Uh, it also increases corrosion, right? So you got some more issues. Um, uh, operational cost goes up, right? Waste production, obviously, now you got extra waste that you're dealing with. Uh, leading to higher maintenance costs uh, and higher equipment failure rates. So on a, on also with this, and when you talk about the safety of the employee, uh, you know, this type of product also creates, you know, jams. Uh, you know, somebody's got to clear that. You got to have a human to do that. Uh, you put people at risk, yeah. uh, which in order can increase, you know, comp costs. I mean, it's, it c could go on and on. Yes. There's so much, uh, there, it, it's so vital to understand that, that it might not look like a big deal, but the end result, it's a big deal. It almost magnifies through the process to the end mill. Uh, right. You know, if there is that contamination, it just continues to grow and become a bigger issue all the way through. Right. And yeah. you talked about the human safety aspect. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. take a lot, right, to contaminate a lot. It doesn't. Right. It doesn't take a lot at all. Not at all. So there's, there's a, as far as like, a, you know, we, we, we talked about one of the topics was the, the market conditions and China decision policy making is, is I, I can't really talk about that as far as that goes, but as far as our company, uh, you know, we, we are uh, one of the, the largest integrated paper recyclers. Uh, we manage the entire recycling process from our clippings ourselves, and we obviously buy, buy, but we also recycle everything that we have, you know, to ensure that, you know, we're getting a good product from our own places, right, our own companies. Uh, Thirteen of our mills use recovered uh, fiber exclusively from recycling facilities, produce 100% recycled fiber, for new paperboard and uh, corrugated boxes, which is, uh, you know, we talk about cardboard yeah. and corrugated. Uh, in 2018, our company, a West Rock, uh, Recycling Facility, recovered 7.6 million tons of fiber. Wow. So that's a lot, but just think about what it could have been if you're not dealing with, you know, contamination. Absolutely. So there's, I don't have a figure on the contamination part, but that's, we know that's significant. Absolutely. You know, for what you, you were just saying, you guys. Um, so we do a lot of items on that, but as far as uh, how it affects, you know, the other, you know, as far as capital investments and plant uh, expansions, um, poor paper recycling in the long run affects capital investments and plant exp expansions like this. Less effective fiber recovery increases operational costs, which we, we talked about, of recycled uh, in a paper mill. This cost increases limits uh, ability to reinvest capital investment and expansions. Uh -huh. Uh, funds could be diverted into further fiber handling and cleaning equipment instead of other plant improvements and expansions. Absolutely. So it has a, it has a massive impact. It's massive all, impact. It's all downstream. Yeah. You know, what it starts at the at the home. You know, in the container. Right? Container. That's right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, and it uh, and it's something that that is uh, controllable. We can fix. It. Yeah, we really can. It's just, it's just everybody's got to do the right thing. We all have to yeah. do our part. It yeah. starts with education. Yeah. It starts with awareness. Right. And it starts with a kind of accountability and, yeah. and doing the right thing. Well, Recycle I, right. right. I guess before you move, I'd add, because I think, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the garbage guy. I'm the collection guy. So you guys are kind of the, fine, the, the mill and everything like that. But, you know, I kind of dabble over into y'all's world every <laughs> once in a while. But, you know, one of the things you, you referenced, Michael, that you are, you're fortunate. You have the markets to find the stuff, you know, that I bring to you. That sure. you, After you guys clean it up, throw all the trash out of it, you got material that you can sell, which is the whole, the reuse, the, you know, back, you know to use it back and get it out as a useful product and, or a new product and stuff. So, and, and that's one of the things that the American mills and stuff have done is that, 
and, you know, Republic, Waste Management, you know, we've kind of been working on the, that process for a while now. Where, and you heard stories in, you know, with regards to uh, the recycling market, it's so bad, people are landfilling and stuff. Well, part of the problem is we kind of accepted, you know, what was the problem was our biggest pr purchaser of recycled materials, what? Was China. Was yeah. China. Well, China finally woke up one day and said, what? You no know more. what? Yeah. We don't want this dirty stuff which you referenced, that you still get dirty stuff in your bales and stuff like that, your product, they woke up and said, wait a minute, all we're doing over here is we got a little bit of recycling and a lot of trash in this, and we're still, and we're having to landfill this stuff right. back out. So, it, so they woke up and said, you know what, we're put uh, mandating no more trash, X percent only that we'll accept. And so what has happened, it makes the markets and finding homes for this product. You're, you're right. Waste management here in North, we have, you know, we're fortunate. We have homes for this material. Other places of the country are struggling right. with that issue. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, we wanted to kind of do this today was to, to make sure that Fort Worth and North Texas uh, knew that in this area, uh, the correct materials that are going into the cart, getting collected, getting recycling, are going to mills and being used. That's right. And so, wanted to move to kind of a, a little bit of a, a, a fun example of is it recycling or is it not? Mm -hmm. So, pizza, you know, West Rock does make, you know, corrugated containers. So, pizza boxes, one of those questions we always get. Recyclable? Yes? Yes? It depends. Well, it depends. So, <laughs> so looking at that, is that a yes? That's a no. That's a no? Well, okay, so now, now it's a no. So, but it, you know, that was one of those things that a lot of people, you know, if it's empty, clean, and dry, then yes, it can be recycling. But when it's saturated with grease and oil that is going to get through the system and then impact, you know, the finished product, product do you want to order a pizza that ha that you know has cardboard that looks like this or has particles in that? Um, you know, one of the other things, Michael, you mentioned, you know. Plastic containers, you know, this is another good example. Is it recyclable? Well, the bottle is, mm -hmm. but when you look at, you know, this container, it's got two different types of plastic, metal spring, metal bearing, ball bearing in there. So the container is, but the pump mechanism isn't. Right. You know, so th there's these other aspects that, you know, it, it kind of talks about. Oreos, you know, is it recyclable? You know, no, it's not from the standpoint of, you do have a plastic container inside, but people aren't taking the, the time to pull out the plastic and throw the, the, the foil packaging, you know, away. Um, one of the things we didn't talk about, you know, is, is the systems and small things. Again, here's a, a glass container, you know, with a wick and a plastic cap. It's the mixture of, of materials, but it's also size. And, you know, one of the aspects that all, almost all MRFs are set up uh, to anything that's typically smaller than two inches, maybe an inch and a half, the size of a credit card. three inches yeah. credit card. Uh, I think I got a Tic Tac container in here. You know, it's, it's plastic, mm -hmm. but the chances of this going it through the entire system and getting pulled out, you know, as that belt goes flying by at, I don't know how many feet per second, probably 70, 100 feet per second, it may not happen. So, uh, you know, again, some, you know, you see these pop up, you know, the little, it's plastic, plastic container, you know. So it is one of these things that we are having to kind of slow down and start with the, the education making sure people understand the difference between what is truly recyclable and what is something that could be recycled like a single-use plastic bag. We have these consumer choice bags that we've been promoting. City of Fort Worth is not taking a banned stance on any plastic bag, but it's the consumer's choice. If you're going to use plastic bags, then use them for, you know, liners in your trash containers at home, pick up after your dog, or Bundle them up, take them back to the grocery store the next time you go buy them, and so they can be recycled. But it's not acceptable in the, in the cart. So, hey, we've got a couple questions coming in from uh, Facebook uh, or the Discovery Theater. 
Uh, has the city identified certain zip codes or neighborhoods that are more prone to contamination? If so, are you targeting those areas with more education? That's a great question, and, and it kind of touches on, you know, from a driver's perspective, as they're out running those uh, routes, they have the opportunity to see what's in the bin, not before they dump it, but once they dump it. Uh, we do the quarterly audits so that we randomly select five different areas, uh, one for each day on a quarterly basis. We go through, we look at the carts before the material is collected. It, material is taken to the MRF and it's actually sorted out by individual grades. Um, and so from a certain aspect, yes we do. Uh, we have been targeting uh, advanced recycling or enhanced recycling education uh, through some of the individual Facebook posts, uh, sometimes neighborhood associations, the community engagement uh, office or area uh, has community education coordinators that reach out into you know, those neighborhood uh, uh, homeowners associations. We do work with the Fort Worth ISD of trying to offer educational materials to uh, the specific schools and not only in the schools but that's one of those things that if you identify that area of education with your little children what happens? Three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock we get home from work and oh hey dad you can't do that anymore. Hey dad that's supposed to be recycled. Uh, so we're taking that and then obviously with the Blue Crew. Uh, we do identify certain routes that are more prone to have recycling issues, contamination issues, uh, that you know, are really focused on that. And, and that's where, that's, a, <coughs> I'm scared, that's actually where the Blue Crew actually performs an audit out there. We make some collection alterations with our routes and allow, allowing, you know, so the, the auditors can be there on their service day. So we, uh, you know, adjust uh, so that that can be completed. And then, you know, there's also they, you know, like, like you mentioned, the Blue Crew actually pulls the recycling material back out. They, you know, if they're auditing, they're not, you know, they pull it out and then, you know, they push the cart back up and they put it at bag next to the cart and we know to go pick the, dump the cart and take that bag also. But, you know, it, it's a, a lot of labor, I would think. A lot of, you know, and it's about those touches I was talking about earlier. It's, it's you know it's kind of a uh, you know it's 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 not the most efficient way, but it's it's what we got working right now, and where it is work. I mean where it is being used, I, we, I think we've got some success oh, yeah. successes on it. So yeah, and, and I was gonna say it, it is the balance between trying to to utilize resources in a cost effective way. Mm -hmm. There's 230,000 homes, you know, uh, to try and address every one of those homes on a annual basis, on a quarterly basis. You know, we, we don't have the resources or the financial aspects. The city, you know, the residents really are not going to pay for trying to make sure that every home is visited, you know, no. every year or every month. Um, but one of the things we've started also, Michael, with, you know, is to promote the MRF tour of actually setting up uh, individual tours so that homeowners associations or schools, uh, Boy Scout, Girl Scout groups can come out to the facility and actually see how that material is, you know, is when it gets dumped on the tipping floor as one big mound of, of recyclables with contamination mixed in to then being sorted. Uh, yeah. how, how, what kind of success do you guys see, you know, as far as those tours and, and yeah. how impactful it is? I think it opens up people's eyes to what, what it is that they do on their end, how that affects the recycling stream. We talk about wishful recycling, and I think that, that when you talk about a direct impact, it, it really eliminates that wishful recycling. Absolutely. I mean, we don't separate the materials. We don't, uh, you know, we don't melt anything down. We simply take the plastics that are all sorted out together put them in a big cube and then move them on to our suppliers like West Rock. So uh, that is all that happens at the recycling center uh, in terms of separating the material. So then when people start thinking about uh, those packages that have the multiple types of materials on them, they know, okay, I should probably throw this away. And right there is an immediate impact. And then every people, person that you touch, then they end up telling somebody else about it and so on and so forth. And that's the educational aspect that we hope to impact uh, Absolutely. With, the, with the people coming in for tours. Absolutely. So. And, and we, we kind of touched a little bit about what, know what to throw. Uh, is a regional campaign that uh, the city of Fort Worth participated in as part of the North Central, T T North Central Texas Council of Governments. 
uh, so that we try to create a common, uh, um, not barrier, but a common campaign and knowledge of these are the types of materials uh, that you can recycle uh, in all of North Texas, these are the kind. These are the most predominant contamination areas uh, that uh, you know, contamination items. So that as individuals that live in Fort Worth may work in Dallas, or that live in Dallas may work in Fort Worth, they're they're hearing that same message. So it kind of breaks down that barrier of oh well, I can do this here, but I have to do that there. Uh, and so one of the things, time to recycle, if, if you haven't uh, taken, you know, a few minutes, I would encourage everyone to go to the timetorecycle.com website and go through the Know What to Throw quiz. Uh, it's a regional-based campaign that's, you know, began this past June. Uh, it's going to continue, you know, into the future. Uh, I know what the city, uh, you know, Fort Worth website has uh, also some tools, the Waste Wizard. So if you have a question about, you know, is styrofoam recycling, you can type in styrofoam. It's going to tell you not in the blue cart. Do not put that at your curb, but you can recycle that now at one of the drop-off stations. We, we implemented a program last month. Uh, so there are those tools that, you know, we try to reach out into the community. We've got another question coming in from the Discovery Theater. Can you clarify the numbers on the bottoms of plastics and what are acceptable by Fort Worth? Oh, that's a good idea. You know, I brought in a you know, couple things. So, you know, typically all plastic containers have a little triangular area uh, with a number one through seven. And the number identifies what type of plastic it's used to make, you know, the actual container. So, you know, right now the city of Fort Worth accepts number ones through sevens, no styrofoams. Uh, but that's what that is. But, you know, there are a lot of uh, products that are made out there, you know, uh, and, and this is a, an example, you know, styrofoam or raspberries. We have really moved into a, a situation where these are potentially more of a contamination issue than they are a recycling aspect. And I say that really for two reasons. One, there are a lot of these containers, this one does have, you know, the triangular, you know, type of plastic on it. But there are a lot of these types of clear clamshell containers that you don't know what type of plastic it is. And then also they usually have uh, kind of a, a, a pad, a moisture absorbent pad stuck to the bottom so that as the strawberries or raspberries fruit, you know, it absorbs that moisture. And residents aren't taking the time to peel that out because that again is a, it's a, a separate material. It's saturated in food you know, food juices. Uh, it creates issues. And so and that's something we don't separate. So, so then, if it gets through the system, then it goes to down to the, to to your end, and then it contaminates uh, an entire batch, right? So Absolutely. So those plastics, you know, again, it, it's critical. Uh, you know, container, again, one of the sure. things that I started my wife and, and kids on, uh, you know, is the amount of these types of plastic containers are where? Where in your house are these? Uh, bathrooms, bathrooms yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Laundry room. And, yeah. and what is important for these types of containers? Empty, clean, and dry. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I've started getting on my kids, you know, <laughs> okay, hey, I go to the shower, mm -hmm. and here's like 15 containers sure. that are all like a little bit left, and it's like, no, come on, Hadley. <laughs> you know, take the container off, put some water in there, rinse it around, put it on your washcloth, use it, and then once it's empty, you yeah, know, sure. get it to the recycling bin. Mm -hmm. Don't let it sit there and stack up. But it's one of those things that it's really, it's relatively easy. And, if, those, and those are great materials for recycling. You can use them for so many different things. Absolutely. Those in particular. Yeah, know. and I mean, it's heavy duty. It's thick. Mm -hmm. it's, it's got a lot of weight to it. So again, mm -hmm. you, you look at, you know, and I didn't weigh this, but this mm -hmm. is probably, oh, eight to ten times more weight than this little clamshell mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing. So it's, again, it, it's, it, we really have to kind of look at getting back to the basics of the specific material that can be recycled but then also uh, looking at how we need to make sure we prepare it. Another question coming in, has the city worked with any pizza company to add sheets or something to reduce contamination of boxes? Oh, 
That's a great question. Uh, I wish you know I could sit here and say yes. <laughs> We moved that, uh, that needle, we, we created that. Uh, we haven't, uh, but within the industry, you have started to see, you know, in the past probably three to five years, uh, a lot of the pizza boxes or pizza companies have a thin, either kind of a waxy sheet or a separate corrugated insert so that the pizza goes on uh, to absorb any of the, the oil, grease, and cheese. Um, do you, have you guys worked? Uh, if anybody, I think, you know, you know. We, we haven't. I mean, we haven't in general because we, you know, we're making the, the corrugated box itself. But, okay. you know, we've seen that where, you know, the customer would start putting, you know, sheets in it. But I don't know how, you know, how rampant it is right now. Yes. I don't think it is very much because yeah. of the education factor on this. But, you know, that is one of the things we, we kind of touched on a little bit earlier. It's the packaging aspect, you know, and I know West Rock is in that packaging yeah, industry. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at the last 10 years, you know, of, of just going into the grocery store, wow, the packaging that is used has changed. I mean, it used to be, you know, a, a 12 or 16 ounce Coke, you know, glass bottle. Everything was glass bottle. Then it kind of moved into the plastic side of things. Right. And then, you know, even lightweight, you know, that the plastic bottle, you know, is 30% less uh, plastic, you know, than it used to be. Uh, when, when I went to uh, buy sour cream a couple months ago, you know, I was looking for the tub and I couldn't find it. And I'm looking there, I'm like, hey, where's the sour cream? And the, the gentleman next <laughs> to me is stocking the shelves like, it's right there. And I'm looking, I'm like, Oh, holy cow, it's no longer in a, a tub, it's one of those foil, you know, squeezable type containers. And so uh, that is, a, a, I think, a great question of where, you know, the city, uh, manufacture, yeah. the, you know, and, and it really, it, it's, it's through the whole system, you know, from the city, from the standpoint of making sure that everybody uh, from beginning to end are starting to have that dialogue to understand and, and you know, life cycle. Uh, cost of you know it may be more beneficial for everybody to use this product or this packaging material instead of that packaging material but being able to have that dialogue through the process beginning to end and making sure that you know okay is it a product that can be recycled uh, through curbside you know single stream recycling can it be recycled through a take back program or it has to be separated from other commodities or you know i hate to say it but is it a, a product that it, you're better off using it and it going to landfill but yet it's a product that or a, a material that's better than you know some other material any any dialogue or thoughts on that oh i i, I would concur i mean that you know it's it is, and you kind of, it, it's moved here in the last five years, I would say. But actually, I can remember 20 years ago when, or 15 when they started moving, you know, some of the big bulky packages and stuff like you used to get. You don't find that anymore, you know, when you, pa when you receive the stuff. And it's, you know, like I said, you know, recycle is all, you know, it's a downstream effect. And everybody, there's all, so many, you know, little pieces to it to make it a successful program and I, I definitely would think that you got you got th you you got things that would be better landfilled than actually going into that recycling because that actually yes yeah, that little that product is going to take up airspace or landfill space which we don't like either but it's actually better than actually what it can do to the recycling side Absolutely. of the house so. yeah I agree wholeheartedly, and I think it's all about consumption as well, right? It's just being right. aware of what you're consuming. Oh. And I think mm -hmm. that that's, at the end of the day, that's going to affect it just as much as anything else that we do here. Absolutely, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things we haven't touched on is, you know, the, this was aimed at recycling. The infrastructure, the program, everything is, is in place, and we're trying to take it and improve it. But, Mike, you bring up a great question, you know, or aspect of, you know, really starting at, at the beginning of the process, you know, and, and one of the things that Fort Worth is, as our 20-year plan, rethinking waste, looking at it to say, gee, do I even need this in the first place? And, you know, okay, if, if I really need it, then when I'm done using it, just because I'm done using it doesn't mean it just goes to the landfill. You know, if it's a usable table, 
you know, oh, it no longer goes with my motif. Well, sure. okay, let's get it to, you know, a nonprofit. Let's get it to another family. I mean, I grew up with hand-me-downs. So I can remember, you know, all my clothes, you know, it was, it was a special day. School and Christmas, I think, were you really what be, I remember. You as, must have not been the oldest. <laughs> not, well, yeah, yeah, so I was the baby. Okay. Uh, so, you know, it, it was kind of twice a year I got new clothes that, that I remember. You know, other than that, it was, it was the hand-me-downs. Yeah, you know, and eat, whether it's even... I was the oldest. Uh, well, yeah, so you, uh, problem, so. you got all new. Yeah. Uh, so... Um, another. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I guess back to that, you know, uh, consumption and everything like that and contamination. I said, but we have a starting point right now, and and and, and I, you got the people that this versus that is that recycling versus that right. If we could get just the people, the ones that are, you know, the ones that we see the yard waste in the cart, the 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 clothes the th sure. that we know doesn't protect, sure. that would be a great start. Uh, it yeah. just, that's that, recycling 200. That, right, recycling that's, that's, right that's that's recycling uh, 3.0. Yeah. We're we we're, we're we're at 1.1, you know, right now. So, yeah, it, you know what? And I I think, and I think the more we talk about it and keep it in front of the residents here in Fort Worth and us talk about it as as the partners and the you know as we go out and you know uh, you know with the task of you know providing this service to the residents here in Fort Worth. We'll get there. It's oh, just, yeah. But you know, if we could, if, if we walk away from this this panel discussion and people are sitting there saying, you know what, I remember, you know, I put yard waste. I put the, I know I did it, and I, you know, they got the devil and the angel on the shoulder, and they say, yeah, hey, I know, I, I know, I shouldn't have done that, but they did. You know, they did. If they would just stop that, that would be, I mean, that would be such a huge, you know, win for us at this point, and then we can, then we can go with educating those, this kind of stuff. The fine tuning. The fine tuning, right? right exactly. 2.0, so, 3.0. There you go. There but you go. You're right. Yeah. So, you know, in Fort Worth, you know, your paper items, newspaper, magazine, you know, office paper, cardboard, chipboard, yeah. plastic containers, one through sevens, you know, aluminum cans, uh, steel cans, glass, bottles, and that's it. And, and again, they're the, the primary, five primary types of materials in your home designed for residential single use purposes. Those are what, you know, you need to know what to throw, sure. so. Mm -hmm. and it, yeah, and so if you have a question in your mind, should I recycle this or should I not? Is it recyclable? Just throw it out. Throw it out. Right. Ask That's the question. If you mm -hmm. can't find, you know, I, I Research find it. Too. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, look at the website or call the city. Can this be recycled? But if you can't get an answer, absolutely. When in mm -hmm. doubt, throw it out. Yeah. The information is out there. I mean, oh, yeah. everybody's, sure. got a, everybody's got a, you know, a sure. phone. Yeah. Everybody's got access and to the internet. And it's, it's absolutely, you can find out in literally seconds, you know, if just, making a, just making an effort to do that. Yeah. Our company is working with, you know, customers on, on looking at uh, ways, you know, they you looked at talking about the grease paper or whatever it might be. So they're constantly looking at ways to improve not just the product for the customer, for their, you know, for their benefit, but also for, uh, because it is, you know, like I said, we, you know, we use those, those fibers to make that product. So and the more we can use, you know, items like that, that's not contaminated, and it's, it's going to benefit us all in the long run, the, the better we get at it. Absolutely. So it's a constant, you know, the, the company's, you know, got a whole recycling division that's, that's, you know, looking at items like that and how to, how to better it. So. Absolutely. So hopefully, you know, hopefully in the near future, you know, we might be able to, uh, come up with something that uh, that'll be, you know, a great, you know, great find or whatever. So yep, it's just it's continuing, uh, continuous improvement. Daily, daily thing. So. Yep. And Mike, you, you uh, not Mike. I'm sorry, Joey. You, you mentioned, uh, you know, it, it, how easy it is. You know, your phones. Uh, Fort yeah. Worth does have, yeah. you know, a solid waste recycling app. So I mentioned the Waste Wizard. Uh, you know, we do have an app that, you know, you can go and download and look at uh, specifically, is this material recyclable or not? You can get notifications, you know, hey, tomorrow's my recycling day, you know, next week is my bulk week, you know, so it gives you notifications. We're moving into the winter weather, you know, if we have, have delays with, you know, collections, anything like that, or post storms, you know, Father's Day. We had, you know, the Father's Day wind storm, you know, that hit up north and, and through other parts of, you know, Fort Worth. 
being able to have you know that information you know is easy. I'm downloading it as soon as we get done. So there yeah. we go. I made my wife download it. My <laughs> <laughs> well, I, here. I was surprised. I mean, I've never seen something like that before. And so it was really nice to have that app to be able Great. to use it. Mm -hmm. We've got another question uh, from the uh, Discovery Theater. Does Fort Worth still accept aseptic packaging like milk containers? And you know, it's it's funny. You bring that's one of those questions. You know. Uh, you know, I'd say yes, aseptic cartons are an acceptable material in Fort Worth's program. Uh, as long as, again, it's empty, clean, and dry. One of the things that we see with, you know, these containers are that you don't see, you know, inside of them. Uh, so with the, if the lid's still on, they have, you know, water or milk or something <coughs> like that still in it, it becomes a problem uh, from that standpoint. But, you know, water's one of those, and I don't have... Uh, my glass with me here in the studio, but you know it, it, it begins with a choice. You know, buy a filter container and drink tap water, buy bottled water, buy container water. Uh, you know, and so you know it, it is one of those opportunities that, to make a decision. But yes, aseptic containers are a part of it. Another question: um, Profit uh, organization. Uh, we working with profit nonprofit organizations such as churches considering. Uh, residents or, or businesses, how do they start a recycling program? Uh, the uh, city, uh, with one of the 20 year uh, plan components, uh, Anne mentioned it, the material management program. We have uh, three planners and one uh, marketing analyst uh, that work not only in the residential, helping to improve our residential program but they actually go out and work with Fort Worth businesses, nonprofits, schools, and they go into those businesses, they'll do a waste audit uh, or a waste assessment, uh, identify kind of what that business is in, you know, their core business, what streams they have that could be recycled uh, or need to be uh, uh, landfilled, uh, and then they'll look at, you know, if they have a program in place, how can they enhance it or improve it, or even you know help them implement a new program. The city does not service businesses. That's where we partner up kind of with waste management and Republic and other uh, waste haulers or recycling service providers uh, in Fort Worth that we leave with the business with, hey, here's our recommendations. You can do this, 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 and this, but it starts with reaching out to someone that can offer those services and asking the questions. What kind of services can be put in place? So that is one of the things that, you know, the, the comprehensive solid waste plan is moving beyond kind of recycling at the curb or the residential stream and moving into that, you know, commercial sector. And, and really, you know, both of you guys know running landfills, you know, typically uh, the residential sector is kind of the smallest sector of the total amount of volume going into a landfill. And, and within our plan, historically, we look at basically simplistically Base, about a third uh, of the volume you know, going into our landfill is residential in nature. Two-thirds of it is commercial. And think about as you drive around in Fort Worth, you know, both of you gentlemen were talking about you know, expansion and everything. You guys just moved your location into you know, the, the new uh, CNG site. All we're seeing around Fort Worth is that you know, growth in business development and, and everything. Apartment complexes, uh, yes we do. Uh, the city of Fort Worth was one of the uh, first uh, municipalities in Texas uh, to move down the road of really encouraging multifamily uh, complexes to offer recycling. So we have an ordinance in place that they have to uh, provide for a plan uh, so that the tenants of those multifamily uh, you know, units have access to the same type of recycling program that the residents have. Um, so, you know, we have a great opportunity. Again, uh, this is not about, you know, what's wrong. It, it, we're addressing, we're identifying kind of what's wrong on a global aspect, but within Fort Worth, we have done a tremendous job of having a successful program, uh, continuing to improve it and uh, moving forward with kind of Recycle 2.0 or 3.0. Where are we gonna be five years from now, 10 years from now, you know? It's a great opportunity. 
Uh, one last question, getting uh, close to the end of the, uh, the hour here. Uh, Heard Fort Worth now accepts styrofoam. Can you explain the new program? Absolutely. So uh, Fort Worth saw that one of the contaminants that we were getting in the recycling carts was styrofoam. Uh, so we uh, uh, submitted an application through the North Central Texas Council of Governments uh, to receive uh, what I call seed money or, or grant funding to assist Fort Worth with implementing a program. Uh, so we were able to receive COG grant funding uh, to have what's called a densifier and trailers so that at every uh, drop-off station or the four drop-off stations in Fort Worth, residents can take, uh, again, clean, empty, dry, uh, styrofoam packing material uh, to the drop-off station and have that separated, uh, stored separately, taken to another facility where it's densified. So if you think about a, a large industrial blender, uh, kind of a heating blender that takes it and grinds it up into a smaller par particle, heats it up and kind of creates a densified uh, polystyrene product that then get, uh, it gets pushed out at the end of the machine to make a, a new, what I call a, a brick or a log type uh, material that's you know heavy, it's, it's densified into uh, one heavy product. That material is in uh, stockpiled, uh, and then we're in the process of, we just started that last month, so we're in the process of getting that material. Uh, once we have enough of it, we will sell that to a mill, a different manufacturer, uh, that can then use it to make uh, styrofoam uh, crown molding. Different applications, but you know, one of them is, is made into you know, a, a polystyrene-based crown molding uh, instead of the old wood you know, molding. So that's another one. Uh, Fort Worth, I greatly appreciate uh, everything that you've got uh, you know, going on and working with us as an entire community. Uh, I don't know if, if each of you want you know, have a, a closing word or two to wrap up today's session? Uh, no, other than say thank you again for allowing me to you know, come to this and visit with uh, that and kind of share the perspective from the collection side of the house. Um, we're, we're definitely a, a committed partner and a good partner, we think, and we have a great partnership uh, across all lines and look forward for this you know, uh, recycling 3.0, you know, but it's going to take a little work. We got oh, some yeah. work ahead of us, yeah. and uh, I think we're all committed to doing that, but uh, thank you again for having me, Robert. Thank you. Yeah, and I'd, I'd say, you know, you look at 10 years ago, the recycling markets were selling at $200 a ton to the mills. We're now down to $30 yeah. a ton uh, on average, so you look at the, the price drop. So when we talk about the things that we can do as individuals, uh, not just as organizations, but as the individual at the cart, these are the things that we do to improve the quality of the materials that make it to the mills that keep recycling sustainable here in Fort Worth. Right. And right. so the continued pressure uh, does not just make this a luxury for us. This is something that uh, as residents we, we have to do, right, to keep it going. And, and fortunately, we're still we're on the on the good end of that right now. So yep. uh, but, you know, happy to be here and happy to talk about recycling. Thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. Joey? Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys. Uh, uh, you guys asked me to come down. Um, uh, we I found something out that while we were discussing last week about just some some things at our local location uh, that we need help with and and uh, uh, that would be very beneficial to you know you know a lot of our locations in in, in Fort Worth area. So uh, this has been really educational for me as far as uh, uh, some different things coming on, especially the app. <laughs> um, wasn't familiar with that will be. Uh, but but uh, overall, it's just the the more contacts you can make dealing with this is 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 vital to you know what we're you know what we're trying to do. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you all, uh, not only for being here today, but being you know partners uh, in this. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, we all have to be you know really recognize is at the end of the day, uh, we have a a, a, a resource. And you know, one of the aspects is reusing this acceptable material into making a new product. But the one thing we didn't talk about yet today, and, and this may be one of the opportunities for a future one, 
we can do it out at the landfill. Uh, one of the aspects, the city's landfill, uh, is not an infinite place. Uh, so, you know, we are looking at between, you know, 20 years, maybe 25, if we can get the community engaged in and the businesses more engaged in taking advantage of waste minimization and recycling or diverting that material away from the landfill and preserving the life of our landfill. Uh, because that is a tremendous asset, uh, but it's also a tremendous responsibility because you know once that site you know, reaches capacity, where's that material gonna go? Uh, and it's gonna have to find a new light, a new landfill, a new site, um, and you know, right now in today's world, permitting a landfill is not the easiest of things. Nobody wants one, uh, but yet it's a necessity. We had, as a community, we as a city are responsible for making sure that there's safe and effective and environmental uh, means to dispose of all that solid waste. So I uh, appreciate Fort Worth paying attention and including in. It is going to be the first of a future one. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, I'd call 817-392-1234. Uh, that is the city's uh, commercial uh, care uh, hotline. Uh, they're there to answer questions, and if you have any service issues with your residential or other city needs, definitely use that city's website or download the app, uh, the Re Recycling Solid Waste app or the My Fort Worth app uh, if you want to report an issue uh, that you notice as you're out there in Fort Worth. So with that, enjoy the weekend. Greatly appreciate you. Look forward to future opportunities. Thank you.